are also still nowhere near having a solution there. So um, if you if you are catering for um, one commercial something out there, then uh, you will have to muck around yourself as well. <laughs> Jeff doesn't want to look up to any of them. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But on the other hand, you know, like some of the software, Zimbra might actually be certified for Solaris, whereas it isn't for Linux. It, it maybe boils down again to the point that we as distros are not established to the point where the software authors are actually willing to pass dependency handling up to us. Because they still think that like a distro just moves all the time and we can't rely on them, so we have to provide everything ourselves. Whereas all the commercial vendors say, hey, we guarantee to give you a s system that will be you know, out of date in seven years because we don't release an update. Yeah, so the, the comment from Matt Zimmerman was that um, this is possibly a people problem, that the uh, upstream authors don't actually know who to talk to at the distributions, and I think that's certainly true, um, that there are just so many out there, and we don't really have you know like one particular um, group of people taking care of one package in all distros. Um, that would be kind of nice, but we have sort of people taking care of this distro and then people taking care of this distro, and if you want to coordinate with all of them, that's a bit of a pain. So VCS PKG is also trying to go a little bit in that direction. There's another question back there, and then I think we have our next talk up. We Yeah, the, I, I guess the companies will go through uh, massive lengths to find hacks that just make it work with the uh, with the uh, least trouble in the end. I mean, whatever works will be used, and if that, if the one gigabyte depth file that you mentioned is the only way to do it, then that's the only way to do it. All right, can we, can we have one last question over there? I didn't understand all of this, but I think that one of the points that you were making, and I think maybe that's a good one to end with, is that um, we, we lack interfaces. Interfaces that, once they are defined, um, you can actually cater to from both sides? Or did I completely misunderstand what you were saying? If you're... So that, that what you're saying is because the distros don't actually, let me reuse my term, in, an interface to upstream that is consistent across all distros, um, the, the best, or the only way to actually make, make it work on all of the distros is by providing that one gigabyte tarball that writes straight into your file system. And then it works because it's been tested, but it doesn't integrate at all with the distro. Yeah, so we need to get from there, what is the current status quo, to the ideal solution. And yeah, discussion is on, but we have the next speaker. Um, I hope at least. I think it's Laszlo. 
Hmm? At half past? Or do we have the break now? Well, I'm a little bit out of out of schedule now, um, and I can't connect. Can anyone quickly do? Do, do you have the schedule? No, I have the schedule. It uh, it starts at half past, so we have a 15 minute break now, or something like that. Well, then we can continue talking. <laughs> How awesome is that? Okay, I'm going to, so that, that was Laszlo just quickly describing um, what, what he's going to talk about to help people make decisions. I think what we have, I, I just regained control over the schedule in my head. What we have now is this 15-minute break that allows people to switch between the mini-confs, um, which we can bridge by having further discussion. There was a hand coming up from Dustin. Yeah, Dustin's comment was that we seem to have solved this problem about dependencies with libraries for compiled languages. I'll just sum it up. It's something that, yeah, so you have basically linker. Uh, if you have the linker, then for, for that kind of thing, we've solved it. But the scripting languages, they um, pose whole new um, challenges, probably because they don't have the differentiation between the API and the ABI. They only have the API, and that's interpreted at runtime, more or less. So we have a whole new set of challenges there, and maybe something, maybe we will need, and I was trying to make that point earlier as well, maybe we will actually need something like Google Linux Alien um, to bridge that gap, because we probably don't actually want to ha add knowledge about every single scripted language into the package managers. The package should not know about Lua, you know, please. Yeah, well, the point, the suggestion was to have an extension like dpackage-lua take care, and then somebody said that that should be apt calling Lua, um, Lua's package manager. That's actually an interesting idea there, because dpackage, it, it is the deb package manager, sort of, and if you don't have debs, then it makes little sense to use that tool. Um, it's like fitting, what is it, round pegs through square holes or something like that. But um, apt, on the other hand, which is higher level, and that same thing exists for, for other distros, of course, as well, um, have that then called the domain-specific package managers. And maybe maybe we should just stop packaging Python altogether and really just integrate with, make apt actually speak directly with uh, the Python, the Python... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Patching is a problem. Lucas? Well, unless the user is also like a Python developer, then the user really just wants to install Python code and have that integrate well with Apt. So Lucas is saying that one part of the problem may be simply that uh, a lot of people coding um, don't use package managers, but use uh, other operating systems that don't necessarily have them. 
um, and therefore they have to reinvent the wheel, like Ruby gems and so on. So I guess the message that you're giving us is that we need to have less OS X and less Windows users and more Linux users. Is that it? Well, the, so the, the situation that Matt just talked about is when you are developing yourself, then you probably use SVN uh, versions of the libraries rather than using the package manager to install them. And you install from source, exactly. Yeah, that, 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 that's, a, that's a common problem to the point that even I have seen that. Um, Lucas? Well, that's, uh, that's also in part what I, I guess Jeff was hinting at earlier with Boiling the Ocean, the um, sort of vision that a Ruby-centric developer has that when they fix the Ruby packaging, then it's for themselves, then it probably solves the problem for everyone out there. Uh, but we have Ruby and Python and Lua and so on, and so then we have this whole zoo of different um, um, domain-specific package managers, and we want to integrate them, and now that leads us back to, to Michael's work again. Um, I think there's a lot of work to be done here. Dustin? So Dustin tells us about another way that ISVs are trying to solve the problem by now using virtualization techniques and providing you with the entire system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think anybody read you is doing that. <laughs> I will not repeat this. <laughs> All right. Any other comments before we? Oh, I guess we do. We do still have eight minutes. How how to kill time? <laughs> I'm sorry that I've you know cut off the uh, discussion a little earlier. I uh, should have checked on on my schedule myself, and now people are gone. Is there um, someone who wants to pick it up? Please. Is, is, are you suggesting that this, uh, that my grandmother being able to click and have it installed is, is the goal of vendors or should be the goal of vendors? But then... Uh, So they, the vendors seem to want the reliability so, so, to lessen the support that they have to actually do. But uh, and and then now think about the vendor or the the software author who writes the Ruby bindings for you know JSON parsing or the the SHA 512 implementation for Lua. Um, I don't think that they expect anyone to just click and use it. I mean, that, that's a, the sort of secondary dependency that Matt was talking about earlier, that you just you never y need it directly, um, but you only need it indirectly because the software that you want to use uses it, so it should be installed. But on the other hand, the developer 
writing software using this library probably is a very Lua, Ruby, or Python-centric person and wants to get the last of them and, and, and the last version and therefore uses the domain-specific package man manager to install it and sees that there are no problems with that because it just works and leaves all of the challenge to the distros of actually then integrating and versioning and all the, you know, you name it, all, the, all these problems. The question was, has anyone ever actually taken the entire domain of one of those languages like CPAN and converted it, mass converted it to Debian packages? I think Debian Parallel has done it, but... Yeah. But that's only for... Uh, th that's probably also because CPAN is just very mature and, and standardized, as far as I understand. I don't do Perl, so please don't shoot me down, but... Um, so CPAN, CPAN is by far the most advanced. When you look at Python, on the other hand, that's a horrific nightmare. Earlier on today, I said the Python package manager. That's kind of funny, isn't it? Because there isn't one. I mean, there are like five different solutions, but none that really work or none that have become standard. So what do we take out of this? Michael, continue your work. What license is Alien? GPL, you suppose. Okay, so we we have it on tape now that Michael is willing to relicense in case somebody wants Alien, which is you know good. Thank you, and uh, ho hopefully this can actually bridge the gap for not only for Google Linux but you know maybe maybe it's something that becomes usable and then we don't need to reinvent the wheel in apt for Debian or in Yum and so on and so forth. All right, how about now we'll have just like a two minute, three minute break. I'm gonna sit down and then in two or three minutes, Laszlo is gonna start talking. So in case you need to go to the toilet, do it right now. But please be back in two or three minutes.